region's most watched news team. This is NBC6 at 11. Keeping your yard safe, that's tonight's top story. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leanne Woodbury. Well, with all the recent rains, conditions have been ideal for mosquitoes. Reporter Angela Yingling has tips on keeping your yard mosquito free. Not only are mosquitoes annoying, they can also pose a threat to your health. Each year, nearly 50 cases of lacrosse are identified in West Virginia. Lacrosse is one of several viruses mosquitoes can carry. Symptoms can include severe headaches, irritability, uh, sometimes uh, vomiting without nausea, um, and, and of course, you know, you can get uh, loss of uh, consciousness. It's, it's sort of similar to like meningitis. Mosquitoes breed in water, and it doesn't take much for them to thrive. Any amount of water that you can stick a marble in like this is a potential lacrosse breeding place. Experts say stopping mosquitoes from breeding is the best way to keep yourself safe. Every week we need to be checking in our yard for things that are holding water and we just dump them out. You dump them out, problem solved. Experts say it takes a group effort to keep a neighborhood mosquito free. We like to say the yard that's neater beats the skeeter. Reporting for NBC6, Angela Yingling. And we saw a lot of that rain last week. So far, a pretty dry start to the week. Meteorologist Corey Henderson is standing by in the Weather Center with a first look at our precision forecast. Yeah, we certainly have been given a lot of rain here lately, even some rain throughout the evening. Our weather watcher in Peters Mountain picking up on about an inch of rain. Most of you, though, just staying hot and humid without any showers to help cool you off. We do have just a few returns, and I mean just a few returns showing up on our Precision Live Doppler radar. Most of the return activity across Bland and with uh, counties, that will soon be fading away. Let's look at our temperature and see what you're checking in at. Seems like 70 is a very popular number right now. 70 in Fayetteville, 70 in White Sulphur, 73 in Hinton. It's 70 in Princeton, Welch, Pineville, and Bland, and Tazewell, and Grundy. We'll see temperatures getting down into the low 60s tonight. Watch out for some patchy dense fog again early tomorrow morning. But unlike today, we won't see any showers and thunderstorms popping up. We'll be moving in a little bit more of a stable atmosphere, slightly drier air, but still very hot and humid. Highs for tomorrow will be in the mid to upper 80s. We'll see when we'll have some uh, relief from the heat coming up in, a ju in just about 10, 15 minutes. Now back to you, Leanne. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks a lot, Corey. Police are looking for the suspect and the victim of an early morning stabbing in Beckley. Detective David Aller with the Beckley City Police says the victim was stabbed three times outside his apartment around 4.30 this morning. The victim said he went outside to ask several juveniles to leave the area because they were being too loud. He was then stabbed allegedly by a black male. No, no other description of the suspect is available. The victim was treated and released from the local hospital, but police have been unable to talk to him. If you have any information on this incident, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 255 stop. And an early morning accident closes down Route 460. The accident happened in the Knox Creek Coal area. NBC6 received reports that the driver and the passenger of the Brown Trucking Food Service vehicle were both trapped in the truck for more than three hours. Several agencies, including Medivac, responded to the scene. The driver has since been treated and released. The passenger was extracted and flown to a local hospital. There's no word tonight on the passenger's condition or the cause of that accident. Police continue investigating a meth lab in Fayette County. Officers of the Drug Task Force say a tip led them to an operational meth lab in a PAX home. They arrived at the home around 6 last night and continued processing evidence in the crime scene until 5 this morning. Officers say the lab was fully operational when the raid began. There were three unrelated people in the home when the police arrived. Charges are pending against all of those involved. The Princeton and Bluefield Police Departments are still working together to find a man who they believe was involved in three robberies. Detective Charles Poe of the Princeton Police Department says so far the information that both police departments have received hasn't led to any solid leads. The suspect is described as a white male, 5'8 to 6 feet tall with baggy clothes. Police believe the same man robbed Domino's Pizza and Berkshire's frozen custard in Princeton and say it's possible he's the man who robbed the Joy Food Mart in Bluefield, killing employee Esla Mohammed. 
Poe encourages anyone with information to contact their local police departments. After West Virginia delegate Ron Thompson officially turned in his letter of resignation Thursday, well, the question on many people's minds, who's going to fill his shoes? Finding a replacement for Delegate Thompson is up to the state Democratic Party. Four members of the Delegate District Committee are working to choose the right candidates. Two representatives from Raleigh County and two from Summers County have until August 10th to suggest three candidates. That list is then sent over to Governor Manchin's office, and Manchin has five days to select the next delegate. Thompson resigned last week, stating that the full recovery from his bipolar depression was taking longer than he expected. A presidential hopeful made a stop in the Commonwealth today. Speaking in Richmond, Virginia, Republican presidential hopeful Mitt Romney is taking on rival Rudolph Giuliani over who has the best health care plan. As governor of Massachusetts, Romney says his health care plan was passed by the legislature and now Massachusetts law requires employees and employers to provide insurance to other workers. Giuliani's plan would combine a major tax deduction, health savings accounts, vouchers, and and Medicaid reform. American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees and the West Virginia Public Workers Union are both jockeying to advocate for public employees. The two organizations hope to take part in the meet and consult pilot projects. The pilot projects will allow representatives employees at the regional jails, general services, and the Division of Purchasing and Highways to hold non-binding talks with management over working conditions. Governor Manchin sanctioned the projects earlier this year. Dominion Resources and Shell Wind Energy announced today they'll build 50 more turbines next year at the Mount Storm Wind Farm despite a legal challenge. They'll be capable of generating power for 25,000 homes. The project still faces a lawsuit filed by nearby homeowners who claim their property values will plunge. If you drive a motorcycle, some startling statistics might make you rethink your safety. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in 2006, deaths among motorcyclists rose by 5.1 percent. And that means motorcycle deaths now account for 11 percent of total highway deaths. This is the highest amount of motorcycle deaths per year ever. Experts say one of the factors that contributes to the increase in deaths is a surge of baby boomers, baby boomers buying motorcycles. 2003 statistics show that 53 percent of motorcycle owners are over the age of 40. Locking your keys in the car can be an inconvenience, but if your child is still in that car, it can be a parent's worst nightmare. Beckley firefighters say it's a call they get at least twice a week. Terry Wiseman has more on when a hot car turns deadly once or twice a week, somewhere in that neighborhood. Price says it's an accident that any parent or guardian can make. An unforeseen accident that, uh, you know, with the electronic locks the way that they are now, the easy push button, uh, it's easy to accidentally push the button. You know. Firefighters say if this ever happens to you, don't panic, just call them. Uh, usually the best bet is to call us and we'll come and get them out. Okay. We can do it very quickly. Do you realize you've got the problem, you call us, we come. Um, unlock the car, the child's going to be okay. They might be sweating a little bit, but they're going to be okay. As long as they're sweating, I mean, their body's doing its job. To be safe, make sure your child drinks water once outside the car. You know, dehydration, you know, can be a concern, but uh, just immediately get them, you know, water or any other kind of uh, liquid that uh, can replenish their fluids and be good. Yeah. It may sound like simple advice, but firefighters say use caution if you have a child in the car in this extreme heat. Just take a few extra seconds, you know, before you close that door and just make sure you got your keys in your hand. Be aware, you know, just maintain control of your keys. This is especially important if you have a pet in the car. Just a few minutes, uh, it doesn't take long. Um, you know, the dog overheats and dies of uh, a heat stroke. That was Terry Wiseman reporting. Accident or not, police say the person responsible for locking their keys in the car and they're locking the child in that hot car could spend time in jail. So be sure to be cautious in these hot conditions. Oak Hill police expect to have a new station within the next two years. The Fayette County Board of Education and City of Oak Hill are teaming up on a new construction project. A new police station will be built on the land beside Oak Hill High School. The Board of Education will provide one acre of land in exchange for extra policing of large school events. Oak Hill City Council voted unanimously on the agreement between the city and the board last Thursday. This period where we've lost a large retailer in Oak Hill, perception is that, that Oak Hill's not doing well financially. 
Uh, Oak Hill is doing very well financially. We're not wasting money, but we're spending money on worthwhile projects like the new police station. It'll put us in a very high visible spot with the Board of Education having three schools right there at our back door. Uh, it, it's it's going to be great for the whole city. Other benefits include safety for officers and more room for the police department, the municipal court, and other city administrative offices. Well, stay with us, folks. World News Wrap is coming up next. But first, here's the results of tonight's WVBA web poll. We'll be right back. Closed captioning for NBC6 is underwritten by Mountain State ENT and Facial Plastic Surgery Incorporated. A. James Payne, Jr., M.D. A terrorist plot is discovered and a delay for a space shuttle liftoff. This is tonight's World News Wrap. A suspected terrorist has pleaded guilty to planting a bomb in a busy shopping mall in Columbus, Ohio. A Somali immigrant confessed to a judge today to plotting an attack on an unidentified mall on the busiest shopping day of 2003, the day after Thanksgiving. The man suggested the plot is a now convicted al-Qaeda terrorist Ayman Ferris in a coffee shop meeting in Columbus in 2002. Ferris has since been sent to a maximum security prison in Colorado for planning to blow up the Brooklyn Bridge. The Army today censored a retired three-star general for lying about the circumstances surrounding the friendly fire death of Army Ranger Pat Tillman. Army Secretary Pete Drain said Army Lieutenant General Philip Kensinger was guilty of deception and deceived investors following Tillman's death. A special panel will now decide whether Kingsinger should be stripped of his third star. It's been one year now since Cuban leader Fidel Castro transferred power to his brother Raul. On July 31st, 2006, Fidel handed over power to Raul Castro just before he underwent emergency intestinal surgery for an undisclosed ailment. Fidel had held power in the country since 1959. Officials have not yet said whether Fidel will ever resume his duties as president. Colombia's defense minister made a major admission Monday when he told reporters in Bogota that corruption has crept into the highest levels of the country's military. Defense Minister Juan Manuel Santos admitted that cocaine smugglers and leftist rebels had infiltrated senior levels of the army through bribery to avoid capture. Some military officials have been arrested in the case and more arrests are expected to follow. The bribery scheme was discovered earlier this month when the army found classified military information in the computer files of members of the FARC rebel group. They said could have only gotten there through corrupt Army personnel. An air leak in the crew cabin could keep NASA from launching the space shuttle Endeavour next week. NASA thought it fixed the problem by tightening a loose bolt, but testing shows air is still escaping. Engineers are analyzing the problem and are trying to pinpoint the source of the leak. It could take so much work that NASA might not be able to launch Endeavour on August 7th. And that's tonight's World News Wrap. Stay with us, folks. Meteorologist Corey Henderson is coming up next with a look at your pre precision forecast. You're watching NBC6 at 11 with Leanne Woodbury. Meteorologist Corey Henderson and P.J. Ziegler with sports. Corey Henderson. Good Tuesday, everyone. Tomorrow's going to be another hot and humid day, but I think we'll have a stable enough atmosphere that we won't have to worry about looking at anything on our Precision Live Doppler radar. Nothing will be popping up here in the area like some folks tonight where you were given maybe even over an inch of rain. All that activity, though, for the most part, has died down except for this one little cell into the southern part of Bland County and into Wythe County. And this will, uh, though, be gradually dying down as it moves slowly. I mean, really slowly down to the south and the west. So if you live in Withville, you might see a few sprinkles here over the uh, <laughs> next hour or so. We still have some lingering clouds, though, due to some of these storms that push their way down to the south and the west uh, throughout the evening. But overall, drier air is pushing its way into the two Virginias as high pressure is building up uh, to the uh, north and west of us. It's right around Chicago at the moment. And Ahead of it, of course, we have a northerly wind flow. I know you wouldn't know it by the temperature, as you'll soon see, but that northerly wind flow will eventually be bringing in drier air. Not necessarily 
uh, comfortable air and not necessarily not humid <laughs> air, but it will be just a little bit drier and that will also help in aiding to seeing our chances for rain dropping down slightly. Let's look at our temperatures. As I mentioned, even though we've got a northerly wind flow, a light northerly wind flow, readings are looking very summer-like and very warm. 73 right now in Hinton, 73 in Lewisburg, 71 in Quinwood, and 70 the temperature in White Sulphur. And that appears to be where most folks are right now. 70 in Princeton, Bland, and Taswell, and Welch, and Pineville, and Mullins, and 70 right now in Grundy, and 71 in Richland. Here's a look at the future cast map showing you the drier air pushing into the area. We'll start off with some patchy dense fog early tomorrow morning. So a lot of moisture, of course, in the ground after all these rains over the last several days. So watch out early in the morning, but by the noon hour, it will have easily uh, dissipated. And we'll see a few fair weather clouds pop up in the uh, late afternoon, but that'll be it with high, high pressure system building into the area. It'll settle right in and give us some dry weather over the next couple of days. And believe it or not, we could actually use some dry weather. We're wrapping up the month of July. It looks like Bluefield and Beckley ending up pretty nice with over four inches of rain. Of course, a lot of that came <laughs> within the last 10 days. That forecast for tomorrow for the Princeton Devil Rays actually has a dry uh, weather forecast for them as they take on the Elizabethan Twins. We'll see readings around 81 degrees at 7 o'clock. And at the end of the game, readings will only be getting down into the mid-70s. It's going to be a warm one tomorrow. Let's go ahead and check out the weather forecast, though, in detail for you for tonight. First off here, fair skies for Pineville, Yeager, Princeton, Perrysburg, Tazel, Bland, Withville, and Richlands. There's an isolated chance for a shower throughout the next hour into Bland and Wyth County, but decreasing clouds here overall, and we'll see fair to partly cloudy skies tomorrow with highs tomorrow warming up into the mid to upper 80s. Now moving on to Mount Hope, Rupert, Beckley, Hinton, and Peterstown, and Marlington. An isolated shower is possible, mainly in Greenberg County throughout the next hour, but we're going to see those clouds break apart, and then we'll see that um, continue on tomorrow. And, of course, with the sunshine working its way out early in the morning, we'll see the fog burn on quickly, and la that sunshine will be heating us up very nicely. We'll see readings into the upper 80s, and we'll see readings in the upper 80s all throughout the remainder of the week, Leanne. All right, and probably moving into next week because, of course, that's the start of the fair, and no, the fair is always rain. hot. No, well, that's no? True. It, well, you're right. It's always hot, and then it rains. It pours down just about so five book. or six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, folks, we still need to get your letters in. If you are competing at the West Virginia State Fair, we want to hear from you, and it doesn't matter what you're going to be doing. So whether you're showing your prize pigs or your award-winning jams, we're interested. So send your letters to My State Fair. PLX 1930, Bluefield, West Virginia, 24701. Or you can email us at news at wvva.com. Be sure to include your name and phone number on both those, even the uh, email. And if you're planning on going to the uh, West Virginia State Fair this year, time is running out for those ticket deals. Advanced ticket sales in this Friday. So the fair will run, of course, from the 10th, August the 10th through the 18th. And you can head to the BB&T branch bank offices throughout southern West Virginia for gate and carnival tickets. Prices vary based on age and the type of ticket you're purchasing. You can also pick up discount ticket packages at participating CVS stores. For more details about ticket prices, you can head to the website statefairofwv.com. And straight ahead, a local church is giving some local families a special gift. The details coming up after the break. Keep it here. St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Beckley is making hospital stays for children a little brighter. Children's books collected from parishioners of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Beckley for an African mission trip will now be donated to Raleigh General Hospital to establish a library in the Children's Center. In all, 104 books were donated to RGH. The books can now be loaned to children and families while they're in the hospital. According to Father Miller, St. Stephen's wants to help families stay close in times of need and are reading these books together. Um, it's very educational. It's just really good. Uh, the church values family time. And so I'm very glad, you know, hopefully from this, uh, moms and dads and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters will get much better, closer family time uh, with the entire family. Books included educational books on animals, books with popular children's characters like Curious George, and timeless classics like Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Chicken Little.
Mentors from Energy Express along with the American Red Cross will host a blood drive Wednesday, August 1st at Oakvale Elementary School. Red Cross workers will be available from 1 to 6 at the school to collect donations. Now all donors will receive a free t-shirt and a chance to win either a motorcycle from Cole Harley-Davidson or tickets to WVU football game. Energy Express mentor Ryan Williams hopes that parents of the children will be the first ones to come in and donate. Coming up next in sports, find out which company gave Michael Vick the latest boot on his memorabilia. Plus, the best team in the Appy League rolls into Princeton with the Devil Rays able to contain the Twins. PJ Ziegler has these stories and more next in sports. My name is Emily. Now, here with sports is PJ Ziegler. Hi everybody, when you're trying to snap a three game losing streak, the last team you want to face is the best team for the Princeton Devil Rays facing the Elizabethan Twins was just what they needed. Mitch Lukovic, P. Rays farm director and Appy League president, Lee Landers watching this one, top of three. Starling De Los Santos chops into the double play. Mark the length scores, it was one nothing Twins. Down one in the fourth, Keon Kang singles to left. Robbie Estrada comes home to score and that ties the game at one all. It was picture perfect from there. In the sixth, Ronald Edwards walks with the bases loaded. That plates Omar Luna. Princeton takes a two to one lead. Then a wild pitch scores Ben Humphrey and the Devil Rays hold on to beat Elizabeth in six to three. Tyree Hayes gets the win and improves to three and three on the year. The woes continue for the Bluefield Orioles who lost to the worst team in the league. The Eels fall to Greenville five to three. Henry Williamson takes the loss. He is two and two. Same two teams tomorrow night. No matter what happens with Michael Vick's court case, Rawlings Sporting Goods is done with the Atlanta quarterback. Rawlings says it recognizes that Vick has not been convicted of dogfighting charges, but said ending the relationship is necessary. Upper Deck is also removing all of Vick's autographed memorabilia from its online store and will remove trading cards set to be released in October. Last week, Nike suspended its contract with Vick. Just like every high school football team in the state, the Bluefield Beavers have one goal win a state championship. Bluefield returns a handful of players from last year's squad, which went 7-4 and four before losing to Tulsa in the state semifinals. The Beavers added former Graham football star Will Cole to their roster. Head coach Freddie Simon believes off-the-field hard work will be the key this year. We've got some fine young men that have worked hard in the offseason. We think we've got some good leadership, uh, and I think that'll, that'll be a big key. The Beavers open up their season August 24th against Graham. The R word is looming at Montcalm High School this football season. No, not reloading, rebuilding. The Generals have 24 kids on this year's squad and lost some offensive linemen and the running attack of Michael Christian. Returning is quarterback Matt Sisk and Mike Carroll, who the Generals hope will help fill Christian's void. The Generals know hard work will prevail in the end. Well, I think the team, uh, key for this team this year is just uh, dedication and, and work hard. I think if they, they do those two things and they uh, function as a team, I think they have a chance to be successful. We're going to have to step up and teach them the guys that's here. I mean, this is just a loss of what we had last year. We had a good team last year. We all worked together. We're just going to have to do the same this year. The Generals open their season August 24th at Big Creek. It will be a numbers game this year at Pikeview High School. The Panthers have 21 players in camp right now, but are hoping for more in the coming days. 16 of those 21 players are returning from last year's squad, which went winless with no place to go but up. The Panthers are keeping high expectations. You know, we've had all winter to work with the kids and prepare them. We got to engage in spring ball this year, so we came out the first day and uh, we're, we're looking okay. Oh, we went real bad. I think, I think we'll be tougher than what we was last year. We got a little bit of speed back. This year we're just going to try our best, get a lot of repetitions, just, you know, hope our season goes better than last year. The Panthers open up their season at home against Meadowbridge. The Blue Ridge Junior Golf Tour crowned its champions today at Fountain Springs Golf Course. In the 16 to 17 age group, Hunter O'Neill of Bluefield, Virginia won the Player of the Year honors, edging Nolan Breckenridge in total points. In the 14 and 15 age group, Zeke Schaefer of Radford, Virginia wins the Player of the Year honors. Matthew Downey of Galax, Virginia takes home this year's 12 and 13 year old title. In the 10 to 12 age group, Zachary Luttrell of Pounding Mill wins Player of the Year. And in the 9 and under, Dylan Sayers of Richlands, Virginia takes home the title. Congratulations to all.
Definitely. All right. Thanks a lot, Paige. We'll be right back. All righty. Here's a real quick look at the live precision Doppler radar showing you that little shower across Bland and Wythe County pretty much died out here at this point. And these showers and thunderstorms that we've been seeing here in the evenings as of late won't be repeated for too much longer, thankfully so, because the uh, Devil Rays are taking on the Elizabeth and Twins tomorrow at noon. So keep that in mind. That game I thought earlier was at 7, but it's at noon tomorrow. All right. Have a great night. You're watching NBC.